Do you know, every now and then, Andrew Hayes, you have to ask in life, what the fork? Yeah. What the fork is that about? Why the fork? Are there no forks in any business across South Australia ever? Yeah. Uh, this can be expanded out. Sometimes you're at the gym and you look at someone doing something strange and you go, what the fork are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, that happened to me. Yeah, and you're exposing them. Thank goodness you don't go to my gym. <laughs> oh, no. I admit it as well that sometimes I'm the only person in the gym. I'm done a little chess session. Then, oh, what my shirt's gone missing. I'll give myself a little bit of mirror feedback. Oh, what? Why would I get changed in the toilet change rooms when I can get changed in the car park near yeah. the boot of my car? How did you know I did that? Because everyone knows you do that. Seriously, how did you know I did that? <laughs> I didn't know that was genuinely open information. <laughs> Enjoy the podcast, everyone. There is nothing I don't know. Hang on, we need to chat about this. <laughs> what the fork? What the fork? What the fork is happening? Oh, it's back. Yeah. So um, just briefly to explain this segment, what the fork are those everyday little things that you look at in life? Could be other humans, could be dogs, could be horses, whatever. But you go, what the fork? What the fork is happening here? How did horses just I don't know. <laughs> Here we are. What the fork of horses got to do with this segment? <laughs> what I'm saying is it could be absolutely anything. And so this is on the back of the fact that there are no forks in any workplace ever. So we were like, what the fork? Yeah. But it can apply to anything. So please get involved, 0400 919 919 if you'd like to. Mm. And give us a call in a moment, 13 24 10, because this is the gym edition of of what the fork and on the line we've got a school holiday package so that's a $100 Reading Cinema voucher and a $200 Beach House voucher yeah worth getting involved it certainly is worth getting involved okay so I was at the gym this week mid-morning minding my own business as I do just trying to get through a token workout to maintain some sort of semblance of fitness are you dedicating an entire spot this morning to try and tell everyone that you went to the gym no. <laughs> No, but it was what I saw next at my gym that I have never, ever experienced in my whole entire existence of going to the gym. So a guy struts in, he's probably, I don't know, 18, 19, yeah. got sort of like a fairly aggressive street kit on. Yeah. And neck minute, he in the major thoroughfare where people are what, like bang smack in the middle of the gym, he starts break dancing. Oh, nice. <laughs> So when you say break dancing, what are we talking about? That thing where they like spin on their head and stuff? Yeah, like oh, where they wow. spin around on their back like a turtle. He's doing handstands and doing the whole thing in the air where you go like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so aggressive, Andrew. But those guys are unbelievable athletes. Oh, well, I, so I was like explaining it to you and you were like, yeah, that's fantastic. Good on him. Yeah. But I sort of feel like this guy's gone. I've got this real niche skill and it's too good. Yeah to be doing just in my own lounge room. So you know where I'm going to take it? I'm going to take it to the gym. Got to take it to a public domain because there's no spots free in Rundle Mall at the minute. No, exactly yeah. right. Um, the only thing that could have made this story better is if he had have brought his own cardboard and chucked it up. Yeah, that's true. The, the big cardboard square. <laughs> Did you dabble in breakdancing when oh, you were a kid? No. I think even as a kid, you look at it and you're like, wow, that just looks dangerous, particularly when they genuinely spin on their head. That's what he was... Oh, he wasn't spinning on his head. But I know the one you're talking about where they sort of get their shoulders involved and they're spinning yeah. around. Like, they're, they're genuine athletes. Yeah. No, he was... And I have to say, and I feel weird saying this about a 19-year-old boy, but he was ripped. Like, he was jacked. Okay, calm down. He's- <laughs> All right, then. Here he is, Jack. Finally, he's getting the feedback that he deserves. <laughs> this is why he goes to the gym to do it. <laughs> oh, God. Showing off the tools. That 40-year-old blonde woman thought <laughs> I was... Woo! Yeah. 13, 20, 14. Please get involved in this. What the fork? What the fork have you seen at your gym that you've just gone... <laughs> What is going on here? Yeah. There's a lot of kickboxing boxing and like shadow boxing. People do a lot of that as well. See, that's interesting behaviour. Yeah, like when odd. you're imitating other sports. Yeah. Because either you go there on the cardio or you get on the weights. But yeah. when you're doing other things, like if you're a goal umpire and you're just aggressively <laughs> practicing your, your behind signal, hey, hey, hey. it's a real solid shoulder workout. And you've got to mix it up to your left and your yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Imagine David Roden doing that. I know. And that run where they do with they're behind their backs and they just go, they're like, yeah. Like, run over here. Yeah, that's back. not easy. There's a bloke at my gym yeah. who uh, at least twice, I reckon, during a chest workout has taken his shirt off and had a look at the at the mirror. Oh, no. Thoughts on that? Really? Yeah. Thoughts no. on that? Vlog. That's definitely me. Um, there's. A- <laughs> 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 Only. 
only when I 100% know that there's no one else in there. <laughs> you will take your shirt off yeah. and check out I, your ring. I did it one time. <laughs> 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 I did it one time, and the bloke who owned the gym was like, hey, have a look at this. Yeah. Got some vision of you. Oh, no. <laughs> CCTV. Oh, sorry. You got sprung. <laughs> Give us a call. 132410. What have you seen at the gym? A $100 Reading Cinemas voucher and a $200 Beach House voucher. On the line for the, these school holidays is what I'm trying to say. Right, let's take you out with this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's this? a banger back in the day. <laughs> Katie from Highbury, what have you seen at your gym? Uh, good morning. I'm going to throw myself under the bus here. Okay. I had just had a baby and decided I was going to start some gym classes. So I was <laughs> rushing to get out the door one day to go to class. Got myself there, started the class, and I felt something like sweeping along my bottom. And I thought, oh, oh. Well, oh no. Oh. I've looked down and I've put my leggings on inside out. <laughs> now, this brand of leggings, the tag was not a tag. This tag was like a novel. It was like long, <laughs> there was pages to it, and it is sweeping me on my bottom. And I'm thinking, I've got two choices here, right? Yeah. Stay in the class or run out in tears, okay? Yeah. Um, I've decided to stay in the class. Yes. There were these two girls behind me in the class. Now, these girls had not just pushed a baby out of their body in the last four months, okay? No. They were... They'd gone to the gym a fair bit. Yeah. And one of them taps me on the shoulder and goes, um, excuse me, I think you've got your leggings on inside out. <laughs> now, in my mind, in that split second, I've gone, you own this or you run out in tears. Yeah. And I've gone, I've got to own it. And I just turned around and went, yeah. I know, and kept going on with the car. <laughs> I know, I know. great find. <laughs> exactly the look I'm going for. Yeah. Good on you, Katie. I love that view. And it's also, it. Katie's tired, man. She's just had a baby. She's got no sleep. Oh. Yeah, it's a bit going on. Yeah, let's go to where are we going. John from Craigmore. Good morning. Good morning, guys. How are we going? Good. What the fork happened in the gym? Uh, I was a PT on a cruise ship. And I had a lady in a full ball gown with a martini and high heels on the treadmill. Wow. <laughs> That's good. That's really mixing it all up, isn't it? It's a bit of fitness with a bit of downtime. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, and then she decided uh, it would be cool to throw up in the... Uh, the uh, in the toilet? Cup holders. Oh, oh good, cup. very good. Oh, no, John. I can't remember the names. Were you giving a PT session to one of the girls from Absolutely Fabulous? <laughs> I think so. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Good on you, John. That's amazing. Uh, Lauren from Parkside. What the fork happened in the gym, doll? So mine's not as wholesome as the other two. Right. Um, <laughs> um, I do CrossFit, and I have done CrossFit for a few years, so I have seen some stuff. Yep. Um, but I'm going to mention the time that my best friend brought a new guy that she started seeing to the gym who hadn't done CrossFit before. Okay. Um. And basically, she brought him on like a heavy deadlift day. We were testing our 3RM anyway. Sure. The details are necessary in this point. So he had gone to like where the weight belt sections are to find like a weight belt. Yep. Um, popped it on, <laughs> went to lift. On his second rep, as he fully extended it at the top, there was this beautiful assortment of diarrhea that had oh left his body God. down the back of the leg and it dropped on the platform. Oh, he my gosh. Oh. It was I just, I, oh, I felt floor. the worst second head embarrassment. Oh, um, no. I mean, yeah, it's, it's common that girls can sometimes let it let it a little bit of wee. Yes. Um, you know, like if you're a girl, you, you yeah. can totally relate to that. Totally. But, yeah, this poor guy. Anyways, he did end up coming back to the gym for the second time. And as I mentioned, I um, I definitely think it's all about the community in this case. <laughs> yeah, God, being welcoming. You know, and, and, and so after that happened, everyone stood back and went, oh, my God, Andrew Hayes' IBS oh. is struck again. <laughs> <laughs> Worst possible time. Bloody hell, Lauren. CrossFit is, you guys push too hard. Calm down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. well, we definitely brace too hard, that's for sure. Oh, it seems like it's thank you, Lauren. Um, oh. I think we're going to give the school holiday package to Katie, who owned her post-birth moment when she wore her pants back to front. Oh, there you go, oh, Katie. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done, Katie. The kids can take their embarrassing mum out and I'll put my pants on backwards oh, for them. Oh, please just yeah. dress yourself appropriately. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> the Beach House is a perfect destination for a fun field day out. It's more at their house, the Beach House. Um, hey, 
I just, um, I love it how how many times you can relate with Katie because how many times have you come in here with <laughs> stuff your, on his own. your shirt on the wrong way, your pants on your head? <laughs> Remember the time you came in here and you had a shoe on your ear? <laughs> You're like, oh, I just got changed in the dark. <laughs> helps Aussies make the most out of every trip. Book a hotel, flight, late checkout and spa all before you can say Brecky Buffet. Mm, jump on the What If app and get started. What If it's Aussie for travel. Jeez, I love a wedding. Do you? Oh, wedding's just as good as it gets. Good music, good food, good people, everyone looking schmick. Yeah, okay. Mm. I just, I thought you were sort of in bed by 8pm type of bloke. Oh, not on the weekends, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Tell you what, I've had my time again. Man, Cara might have just set things up a little bit differently. According to an Instagram post from McDonald's Indonesia, the restaurant is now offering a wedding catering package that includes a crowd-pleasing 100 chicken burgers and 100 four-pack of McNuggets. The cost of the entire package costs 3.5 million Indonesian rupees, which is equal to about 233 bucks. What a bargain. Oh, that's, I mean, if you could go back in time. I know. Given that most weddings these days, you pay about 200 bucks a head anyway, I you know. guess. Yeah, upwards of forty or $50,000. <laughs> in particular, if you're having an Italian wedding, it could cost you four or five million. <laughs> <laughs> How many are at your wedding, uh, Mr. Italian Man? Oh, 500 people? I spoke, Didn't know 200 of them. I spoke to a guy who was going to an Italian wedding last week, and it was like 400 guests, and that was just yeah, cousins. That's ridiculous, it was literally it? just cousins and their families. Yeah, eighth generation cousin. <laughs> Great stuff. Get involved, 13, 24, 10. We want to hear about the random and quirky little add-ons, I'm going to say, at your weddings. Right, okay. Because people try and be different, don't they? Yeah. They want to make it unique. Yeah, they want to yeah. make it stand out. Um, I took a little trip around the world Did over you? the weekend. That's nice. Just to submerse myself in some different cultures, went yeah. to a few different weddings. Yeah. What about in China? Mm. I'm not lying here. In certain parts of China, crying is a required part of preparation for marriage. A month before the forthcoming nuptials, brides will cry for one hour each day. Ten days into the ritual, the bride is joined by her mother, and ten days after that, the bride's grandmother joins the weeping duo, and eventually other female family members will join in the cacophony of crying. <laughs> Why? They prepare themselves to cry. Why? It's that- not a good sign for Chinese men, is it? No, it's not. That they're crying before they even start, and that's on you Chinese men. <laughs> what about this as well? South Korea? Um, it's customary to beat the groom's feet. South Korean grooms are subjected to a certain ritual before they can leave with their new wives, beating of their feet. A groomsmen or family members remove the groom's shoes and bind his ankles with rope before taking turns to beat his feet with a stick. In some cases, a dried piece of fish. It's obviously painful. The ritual is over very quickly. It's supposed to be funny. Uh, this is my favourite too, from Kenya. Hang on, okay, hang on, stop right there. You're not explaining why. Why, I don't know. why are they beating the groom's feet with a fish? Well, that's supposed to be a little bit funny. Right. But I don't know. <laughs> You're going to have to get in touch with the South Koreans on that one. And they're hard to get hold of. You better believe that. And there's no internet and everything <laughs> is heavily <laughs> <ever> censored. <laughs> everything is absolutely censored. Um, this is my favourite. And this is why I want to move to Kenya. <laughs> Maasai marriage spitting. It's often customary for the father of the bride to spit on his daughter's head and breast before she leaves with her new husband. Uh, this is absolutely outrageous. Who saw this coming? In fact, I don't want to move here at all. No. I said before I want to move here. Quite the opposite. What might seem like a strange, disrespectful custom in certain cultures actually makes sense within Maasai culture in which spitting is seen as a symbol of good luck and fortune. Spitting can be seen in other areas of Maasai culture too. Maasai tribesmen will spit on their hands before shaking hands with elders as a sign of respect. It's also a tradition to spit on new boy Maasai babies to ward off bad luck. My God. Can you imagine? (gasps) Here comes the bride. She looks fantastic. (laughs) 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 But also, also, Dad, why are you spitting on my boob? Because you... (laughs) Because you look so beautiful. You look so beautiful. I can't stop spitting. Oh, my gosh. Dad, stop spitting on my breast. <laughs> that's disgusting. I mean, that's a man who loves his daughter. Look, he can't stop spitting on his daughter's breast. Oh, 13, 24, 10. Get involved here, please. Tell us your weird, quirky wedding rituals. What did you see at the wedding? Yeah, in particular, we've got a special prize for those who are from the Maasai culture. And take us through it. That's a bit niche, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit. Quirky weddings. Take your calls next. 13, 24, 10. If you've spat on your daughter on her wedding day. Quirky wedding. Just... 
Just little things that are happening in weddings across Australia that make you go, oh, that was a bit different, that was a bit memorable. So essentially this is the most bogan thing you'll ever hear. If you go to Bali, you can pay 200 bucks and get your yeah. guess, like how many? A hundred chicken burgers, a whole heap of food yeah, you as got part a, of a wedding, wedding package. You got a hundred chicken burgers, a hundred full pack of McNuggets, the whole thing costs 233 bucks. And that, I mean, maybe it's not what you would classify as really cool and classy. Nah. But it's hitting the spot. Oh, who cares, mate? Man, you, I, I love weddings. You're in your havies, you're on the beach, you've got your Bintang t-shirt on and you're yeah. hoeing into a chicken burger. What oh, more do you want from a wedding? I think it gets much better, to be honest. No, it doesn't. That is absolute heaven. I mean, I got married in Bali, it didn't quite look like that. No. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Did you know that? That's really nice. Yeah. I am just get uh, you. Can you just stop playing that little thing there, Oh, Deirdre? sorry, That's am so I? Cool. Got a little sound coming out of your uh, oh, computer there. I, I didn't mean to. There <laughs> we go. Is that better? That's all good. <laughs> we'll, just work, we'll just work through a little bit of background noise from Jody on his computer. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Very good You're stuff. lucky that's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Goodness gracious me. Uh, delete your search history, please. Um, <laughs> Let's go to Shane and yeah. no down downs. Um, Shane, little quirky piece that happened. Was it your wedding or someone else's wedding? Uh, it's all the family wedding. It's almost like an Aussie tradition, I would say. Is, yeah, after all the formalities, we get on the dance floor, sides come off, go around the head, <laughs> and then we end up in a, in a big huddle singing You're the Voice by Johnny Farmer oh. at the top of our lungs. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Oh, hey, Shane, I'm picturing it right now. And everyone is just going right off. It's, it's, it's a, you have to do it. Yeah. yeah. You have to do it. So now I've done this question. Be. With that bit where it goes, whoa, like everyone thinks they're so in tune. But were you in hindsight? Who cares? That's on the night. Everyone's just enjoying themselves. Yeah, that's exactly right. So at that stage as well, Shane, it's it's just the tyres. There's no other bits of clothing coming off yeah. because obviously if you're merging from that into what's at Eagle Rock where potentially you have to have your pants off. But this is above board. Uh, certainly a few buttons uh, released uh, <laughs> as the night goes on. But uh, generally the tie is a must-have, you know? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, good. Absolutely. It's Very obligatory. Good stuff. Oh. All right, good stuff. Uh, Shane goes in the draw for our winter weekend escapes, uh, which we're going to um, we're going to announce on Friday. A lot of texts coming through as well on oh four double oh nine one nine nine one nine. I just went at my cousin's wedding. The bride lined up and kissed all of her immediate family members on the lips. <laughs> a little bit unsettling. That's from Kim. I've got, a, I've got a friend who kisses on the lips all the time. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's unsettling. Yeah. Is it okay? You're not supposed to do that. All right. Yeah, and this text went to a French-themed wedding where they served snails as entree. They weren't even French. Yeah. That's a point of difference. Oh, yeah. And then we've got Anonymous, and I understand why, who says, uh, when Eagle Rock comes on, you always drop your decks. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Okay. I'll stick with the traditions, thanks, and take you out on this. Get your ties around your head. Hey, we were just um, touching on weird things that you've seen at weddings. <laughs> Abby, you were telling us during that song <laughs> about your sister's wedding. Tell everyone what happened with the DJ. Uh, yeah, we had a slight issue. So the beautiful ceremony had taken place. They were married, blah, blah, blah. And we've all come in. We've been announced as bridesmaids and all of that. Anyway, we go to sit down. <laughs> we go to sit down and all of a sudden there's this like loud bang. <laughs> and we're all like, what is that? And we turn around. Unfortunately, the DJ had had a few too many, let's call them hard lemonades. Yeah, some looseness. And had fallen on, <laughs> like, fallen forward or back or whatever onto his own DJ equipment. Right. Wow. And so basically they had to go, you need to go, <laughs> you need to leave. And I, I don't even know who it was. It was one of their friends who went, oh, DJ. So we had his stuff there in, you know, 10 minutes and he DJed the night for them and off they went and had a massive big party. I think I know the DJ you're speaking of and he yeah. was at one of my best friend's weddings and he was politely asked to leave because he got a little handsy with a couple of the guests. Yeah, right. Yeah, a real prominent DJ from back in the day. I remember seeing him at Wright Street Hotel. He will remain nameless, but <laughs> I I think he thought he was a Vici that day. <laughs> <laughs> to the three people sitting at the bar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> pointing to the heavens. Oh, what? Let's go! <laughs> it's Sunday afternoon, mate. I think he was press and play for Jesus Christ. <laughs> thought he was, anyway. <laughs> hey, um, Abs, can we just take a bit of a, uh, a change in direction and talk about the Commonwealth Games? This is a really sad state of affairs. It is, isn't it? The um, Victorian government came out yesterday and basically said it's too expensive, we can't 
we can't host it. So they, I think it was around two point six billion or something they budgeted for it, mm. um, but it's actually going to be a blowout of six billion because they're trying to hold it in regional Victoria. So they've not looked at things like they need to upgrade stadiums, but you need things like you need buses out to these places. You need to you need to have the um, athletes stay somewhere. You've got to have enough paramedics and cops and things like that also in the regions to be able to help with it all. Okay, and call so, me naive on this one, but you have got what is arguably the greatest sporting capital in the world in the city in Melbourne, Victoria. You've got every facility that you could possibly want within a kilometre of each other. Why aren't we just using that? Oh, oh my God, so naive. Am I right, Abs? Oh, am I? <laughs> Why am I? You've got the existing infrastructure, why? Exactly. So, but they promised, the regional Victoria were promised, <laughs> were promised these things. And now the Andrews government has come out and said, we'll still build all the stadiums and do all of this and blah, blah, blah for you, but we can't host the games. So I, I will say this, bad luck, Ballarat. Yeah. We're holding it in the city. Yeah, mate, that's got a little ring to it, doesn't it? Bad luck, Ballarat. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Commonwealth Games? Well, I just uh, from a personal point of view, I can't tell you how many times I've been frustrated when you budget for $2 billion and it blows, blows out by $4 billion. Oh. You're like, oh, I didn't budget for that at all. I mean, welcome to your Saturday night every single time. Oh, I know. I've got $2 billion. Oh, that's <laughs> not enough. Bank account. I blew $4 billion last night. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. You that at a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> I fear, and I don't want to be a genuine Debbie Downer here, I feel this this is the end of the Commonwealth Games. And unfortunately, they're going to the Games heavens and they're going to catch up with the Goodwill Games. Okay, that's a little <laughs> aggressive. I'm sure we can come up with some sort of plan here. But in saying that, SAWA Queensland have all turned around and said, no, nah, we're not going to have them because it's it's too much. I so. thought yesterday for sure Mally would come out and go, yeah. oh, mm. we'll take it. We're doing everything now, so we'll just take it over. And Jess Trengo have even said, I'd love to have it here because we're capable of it. Mm. And I think that is a sure sign of death because that man can turn anything, any outrageous situation into a positive thing. Yeah. And if Mally doesn't want to touch it, yeah, it's untouchable. What happens to all the mascots now? Like, they're unemployed. Like Perry, Clyde, Shearer, Arobi. <laughs> oh, no. They're all gone. Arobi? What gone. about Arobi? They're, they're all gone to God. Can someone think of Arobi? Please, for the love of God. <laughs> Doc, are you telling me you built a time machine? Daisies on this daisy. Yep, those hump day vibes. Welcome to Wednesday and welcome to a free lesson on history. <gasps> Brought to you by Andrew Hayes. For the 19th of July. Let's start way back in 1954. And Jodie Oddie was born. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I knew, uh, you knew that was coming through, I didn't absolutely you? saw it coming from a mile away. I've been working with you for too long. Too long? It's only been a few months. <laughs> 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 oh, jeez. I heard. Oh, anyway, that's a conversation I'll have with management. It's fun. <laughs> Elvis Presley's first single, That's All Right, it was released. <laughs> no, this bloke's got something. I reckon he'll do all right. Yeah, he's going to go okay. And then he died on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true story. They found Elvis on the toilet. I didn't know that. Yeah, what a way to go. That's how I want to go. Uh, 2005, Death Valley. <laughs> That's how you'll probably go with your IBS, I reckon. <laughs> oh, It'll get you one day. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. Just kept on going. <laughs> Toilet consumed him. 2005, Death Valley in California registered a temperature of 53.9 degrees Celsius. Whoa. A total of 12 days of 50 degrees Celsius or higher was reported. That's crazy. Oh, my gosh. Rig out every day if I was there. Oh, can you imagine? Just laying a real solid base tent. Responsibly, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You would be loving that thick. Ray Day. Ray Day. Oh, what's today? 50 plus? Ray Day. <laughs> <laughs> 2009, Julie Goodwin defeated Poe to win the first MasterChef Australia on Network 10. To beat Poe and to become Australia's first ever MasterChef, you require three points from Gary. Couldn't score you any other way. Wasn't that a real battle of the birds, those two? Yeah. Poe v Goodwin. Yeah, Poe v Goodwin was like, oh, who have you got? Mm. I've got Goodwin. Oh, oh I've, got, I've got Poe. Oh, controversy. Oh, yeah, head to head. Let's go. Let's really battle it out in the kitchen. It was real de de divisive, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. In Australia. It was reminiscent of the days like Angelina versus, you know, Jennifer Aniston. Oh, who's Brad going to pick? Mm. 
Whichever one he wants, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, Brad, Brad. Pitt back in the day. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, 2015, Mick Fanning, Australian pro surfer, was attacked by a shark in South Africa. And we've always said that the South African shark, uh, the South African shark, they bite just a little bit differently. Yeah, they do, don't they? That still to this day, you punched a shark in the face. How good is that? Unbel- Have you ever seen anything more Australian than Mick Fanning punching a shark in the face? As if you didn't love Mick Fanning enough. I know. And then he gets attacked by a shark. He didn't get bitten. That's because he got it before it had got him. <gasps> so it attacked his leash, and then he said, "No, no, no, no!" Bang! And the shark was like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm Mick." Sorry. Go it on. It swam off, yeah. and then Mick caught it by the tail. <laughs> Started laying into it from behind. He dragged it to shore. Started swinging it around like it was a like it was a hammer throw. And then he threw it like three hundred meters away in the ocean. And the shark was like, oh. shark was just in tears. It's beast versus man. I'm supposed to win this battle. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Screw you, Mick. I'm sorry. And Mick was like, go tell your friends. <laughs> Someone's song of July 19, 2006 was Promiscuous by Nelly Furtado. This was a tune back in the day. Enjoy. I, I don't know if this is a flattering song about her, though, about Nelly, like calling her a promiscuous girl. No, she's open and honest. Okay. Good on her. Good on her. Go for it. Such were the ways back in 2006. How you doing, Nelly? Can I peel back the curtain for one moment? So in your other working life at Channel 7 where you're a sports reporter, you are assigned the task of sitting outside either Sports Med or Calvary at any given time waiting for players to come in to scan. scan. Just talk us through the palaver that was Zach Bush's this week. It's like from the moment that he was on the bench late and the Blues lost, we were basically waiting at Sports Med. (laughs) Even when we knew he was was in Melbourne – even like with the minutes ago in that game against Carlton, we started lining up waiting for him at sports. <laughs> what a chase. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you've had varied success waiting for players over the journey, haven't you? Yeah, there was a time uh, Ryan Burton went past us twice, me and Tom Wren, because <laughs> we are in deep conversation. And then he sent a text to a mate saying, are those blokes waiting for me? Because I walked past him twice. <laughs> It's you good. and Rennie hugging each other going, ooh. I, I like the time when we were at Sportsman and we were waiting for someone else and then Travis Boke came out and we are like, What's Bokey doing here? Yeah. And there's a cafe attached to where you get a scan place. Yeah. Bokey walked out and clearly he just got a scan for something. We go, oh, Trav, what's happening? What's happening? He said, no, 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 I'm just here for the coffee. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Deary me. Uh, 13, 24, 10, give us a call. It's going to be a good game. Going to be a huge game. So, Jodes, of course, Nova's handball blitz fast approaching. Mm-hmm. And what we've all uh, sort of realised right from the start is that you're a person who gets pretty competitive with things. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm aware that my behaviour is ugly when mm. I get competitive. I'm conscious of it. I just can't stop it. Yeah, grotesque, mm. some people have said as well. <laughs> oh, I don't know <laughs> who said that. Yeah. What I did like a couple of weeks ago was when our boy Tom Wren said this, set us a bit of a challenge. I think, this is just me, but I think there should be a showdown between the two of you. Oh, you as part of Nova's handball blitz. I think the handball blitz, I think it needs to be a bit of hazy up against a bit of Jody. Yes, just uno on uno for supremacy in terms of the handball gods. Okay. Yeah, you v me. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm up for it. Okay, how's your preparation going? Oh, I mean, I haven't put in a whole lot of time because mm. I've got four kids and a couple of jobs, but I'll make it a priority mm. moving forward. Okay. Um, well, I have put in the hours behind closed doors, okay. and I have been preparing. Okay. got a little video to show you. Right. If you will, Josh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, no. Let's do some work. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, oh. got, him, got him real good. Yeah. Kwame, Dixon, Mangarelli, <laughs> all the handball all, greats. All the elite athletes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have a showdown, and you are in big, big, big trouble. It's five weeks of hardcore preparation, mate. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good luck, schmuck. <laughs> Jump on the Instagram, see the video for yourself, at Jody and Hazy. Um, yeah, look. Greatness isn't born instantly. Mm-hmm. It's prepared through hard laborious conditions where you just put your body right on the edge each and every time. Do you know what you've and been doing? And that's what I did. You know what you've been doing? You've been doing like a Bradman where you've just been standing in front of a wall. Yeah. What did he use? A stick or something? A uh, stump against a tank. That's right. The golf ball. That's what you've been doing. That was me, except <laughs> the golf ball was Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> 
and the stump was my hand. <laughs> the biggest breaking story this town has ever seen. This is huge. Jody's Juice. Just heard from Lizzo there. Well, she ran into some technical difficulties during the second show of her Aussie tour on Monday, performing in near darkness for at least one song. Wow. So basically, towards the end of her show, um, most of the venue's stage and spotlights appeared to go out, so she performed one of her biggest hits, which is uh, Truth Hurts, in the dark. Have a listen. I just took the DNA test, want to be a naysayer here, but she's just singing, right? Yeah. Power's still on. Yeah. Mike still works. Yeah. Mike's just playing instruments. <laughs> well, I know. She's actually incorrect, Mr. Well, naysayer. She played a bit of the, the flute oh, okay, okay. with the lights out. Okay. Well, that, that's would, different. That's like different. To, like to see you play the flute with the lights out. Well, I'm just What I'm saying is I'm still confident I'll be able to sing into a microphone with no lights on. Okay. <laughs> they turn the lights back on and the microphone's upside down. Oh, oh whoops. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now that you've run Lizzo down, let's move on. Juicy. Juicy. Gigi Hadid, who has a baby with Zayn Malik from One Direction. Oh, yes. Remember Zayn? Pillow Talk was an absolute banger. Probably. If I can sing really hard. If I was to choose one of Zayn Malik's songs, that wouldn't have been it. Oh, anyway, oh, what would you go with? You then? do you, though. No, you tell me what you'd go well, it's with. It's a bit of a Debbie Downer, that song, isn't it? Pillow Talk? Yeah. I think it's quite exciting. <laughs> yes. if, I'm, if I'm reading it right. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, Gigi's been arrested uh, for oh. marijuana and drug paraphernalia possession when flying to the Cayman Islands in the Caribbean. Oh. So she was apprehended, landing in a private plane uh, in Georgetown. She was searched by customs upon her arrival. And wouldn't that be nerve wracking when you know exactly what's in your suitcase? Yeah. Ah, Chappelle. And then, <laughs> but no, but she said she didn't know what was in oh, there. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Felt heavy that day, though, the boogie board bag. <laughs> and her dad packed it. She's like, Dad, what have you put in here? <laughs> dad, what is going on here? And then, boop, 15 years in jail. <laughs> it happens, mate. It happens. You've got to be careful when you're trying to import kilos and kilos of marijuana. We've said that from day dot. Anyway. <laughs> I just said, boop, 15 years yeah. <laughs> Time flies when you're in a Bali prison. Oh, anyway. Uh, so, um, she's out now, so she'll be fine. I'm sure she's got enough money to deal with that situation. Yeah, it's good. Mm. Juicy. <laughs> Juicy. <laughs> boop. Anyway, Britney has released a new song. This is exciting with producer and former Black Eyed Peas frontman Will I Am. Um, he teased his song on Instagram. It's called Mind Your Business. He said on his Insta, "Uh oh, this summer's about to be hot." Oh, here we go. Here we go. You are now now rocking with Will I Am and Britney, bitch. I like it already. Is it this Mind your business, bitch. <laughs> Oh, you get the feeling that Will I Am is just provoking Britney, who's clearly probably going through a bit of a phase in her Will life. Will I Am is going to Britney. Don't bother coming to the studio. It's fine. I'll take care yeah, of everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Will I Am has said, hey, you know how you're doing all this crazy stuff on Instagram? Yeah. Well, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's talk baby names, shall we? Oh, yeah. Go on, then. Need some help. Um, so the top trending baby names so far in Adelaide for 2023 have been revealed. You, of course, your wife, Cara, is seven months pregnant. She's mm -hmm. about to pop. Yep. So I'm going to reveal these names, and then I'm going to see if any of them tickle your fancy. Okay. Bearing in mind you're having a little boy. Yes. Just I, I, Why did I point that out to you? <laughs> you know what you're having. <laughs> that, did you just do the gender reveal to me? <laughs> yeah. Surprise, Cara told you before she told me, but that's fine. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so the top 10 baby names for boys. Yeah. Uh, working from 10 backwards, Hugo. Hugo. I know a Hugo. I know Hugo. Good mates with Hugo. Hugo's a lovely name. Hugo, a lot of Hugos at childcare. Mm. Uh, Air, as in A-I-R-E. Air. Air. Okay. Um, okay, next. Arlo. <laughs> Arlo, I know an Arlo as well. Oh, good. Yep. It's Arlo's not a, a test name. of how many, you know, <laughs> <laughs> these people you know on the list. Look at 2410. Do you know an Arlo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is Oliver. Okay. No surprise there. Felix. Yep. Mm -hmm. This one caught my eye. Atticus. Atticus. Yeah. Atticus. Atticus. I'm not sure about Atticus. <laughs> and this is in Adelaide too. Yeah. Treating those in Adelaide. Yeah. Atticus Hayes. Atticus. 
Uh, Addy, does he get Addy? Addy's nice. I oh, like that's cute. Um, Silas comes in next. Silas. This is one I never thought I'd see. Theodore. Theodore. Well, it's Theo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Theo, and then <laughs> Theodore as well. You get Teddy from Theodore. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that makes more sense to me. Thank you. Mm. Coming in at number two is Soren. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm Soren. Did you say sorry? <laughs> Oh, we live in Sweden. Sorin. Uh, I'm Sorin. What was that name? <laughs> uh, I'm surprised it hasn't got those little omelets over the e. You know yeah. those little Swedish omelets. Yeah. Not Sorin. not to be confused with an omelet. You don't know what an omelet is, do you? I know what an omelet is. Give it three eggs, <laughs> cheese, ham, tomato, onion. Beautiful. And the number one top trending baby names for boys in Adelaide so far this year is Royal. Royal. What do you mean? Royal. As in R-O-Y-A-L. As in the Royal Hotel that you used to frequent back in the day. Is that a name? Is that a name? Is that even a name? Royal. Uh, well, apparently it's the top one for boys. Oh, okay. Okay. A well, baby Royal was getting around a bit. I will let so. you ponder on those for just a moment. These are the top ten girls' names. Working backwards, number ten, Evangeline. Mm-hmm. Cute. Number nine is Ophelia. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not Ophelia. Sounds like that's for an inappropriate person would say to someone's ear at a nightclub, I'll feel ya. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in at number eight, this one's close to your heart, is Aurora. Aurora. <laughs> I like Aurora. And if you like the Simpsons, you know what I'm talking about. Good Lord, what is happening in there? (laughs) Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your kitchen. Yes. Oh, Skinner. (laughs) Skinner. Am I right? Uh, Coming in at number seven, Luna. Then Alice, which has always been a popular name. Well, it's quite traditional too. I like that. It's evergreen, isn't it? Mm. Eloise, Isla. And then a play on Aurora is Aurelia. (laughs) Aurelia (laughs) Borealis. Number two is Maeve. And again, the number one is an absolute shock to the system. The number one girl's name in Adelaide is Luxury. Luxury? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Text through 0499 Do you have a baby luxury? Yeah, or 13 24 10 will take your calls. If you've got a if you've got a baby royal or a baby luxury, <laughs> we want to hear from you this morning. I don't know any babies with those names. Mm, okay. Where, where are the good traditional names gone? You yeah. know, LeBron, Razio, <laughs> Shakira. <laughs> Come on, bring it back. Oh, dear. Three names as well I got for your jokes. From the ladies' perspective, yeah. Barbara, Patricia and Karen. Yeah. Will we ever see those names I don't again? I think we we'll ever again. Yeah. Uh, welcome your calls, 13, 24, 10, if you've mm. given birth in the last year to a Barbara, a yeah. Patricia, or a Karen. Isn't that amazing? And yeah. also on the bloke side, Nigel, Barry, and Ian. Yeah. Nigel's done now. They had a yeah. party in the UK because it's officially there are no Nigels. It's extinct. Yeah, it's extinct. Now. Really? Yeah. Well, wow. I guess if your name was Nigel No Friends, you'd want it done too. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and in particular, Baby Ian. Are there any Baby Ians out there? <laughs> no. Baby Ian comes out and he's already receding. <laughs> <laughs> if you jump on the Jodie and Hazy Instagram page, you will see just an athlete going about his business. <laughs> You surprised me with a little piece that you've been working on, um, a bit of training behind the scenes for yeah. Handball Blitz. You got together with a few celebs, Rosanna Mandrelli, yeah. Charlie Dixon. I mean, who knew that Rosanna was such an expert handball behind who, the scenes? I didn't know it. Yeah, surprised me, but here we are. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a big old showdown, but I've been training, you haven't. Yeah. So you know how this probably ends up, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, we'll see. But I, I do I do commend this video. It's actually yeah. very funny. Yeah. <laughs> you take out a big bloke, don't you? Uh, yeah, I really do. Yeah. Uh, at Jodie and Hazy. And also, a big thanks to McGain Real Estate. Massive supporters of local making a difference all over SA. Selling your home, trust McGain. Uh, that's just about it for us today. But back tomorrow. Ricky Lee's going to join us on the show. Forward to that. Oh, I'm going to have a chat to that beautiful woman. Mm. And our Battle of the Bangers reveal. I've just landed on mine, and I'm real happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. You're always confident with these things, I don't want to be smug. I don't, I don't want to be smug, but oh, here it is. It's in my nature. Oh, you've already locked it in. Yep. Okay, well, this is going to be even sweeter when I taste victory in a couple of days' time. Okay. Mm, we'll see. Uh, don't forget as well, Nova's Cash or the car. That continues in a matter of minutes. Just hang out with Maddie and DC today for your next chance to make a really, really fun decision. Yeah. This is Jody and Hazy on Nova.